Hi, my little cupcakes. I have a great story for you tonight. I'm going to read the words and show you the pictures. The name of this book is Cinnamon. I hope you like it. Cinnamon was a princess a long time ago in a small, hot country where everything was very old. Her eyes were pearls, which gave her great beauty, but meant she was blind. Her world was a color of pearls, pale white and pink, and soft glowing. Cinnamon did not talk. Her father and her mother, the Ralph and the, Ra the Raja and the Rani, offered a room in the palace, a field of stunted mango trees, and a parrot to any person who would get cinnamon to talk. So they offered a reward. Mango tree, a room in the palace, a parrot, anything to get little cinnamon to talk. The mountains ringed the country on one side, the jungle on the other, and few and far came the people to try te to teach cinnamon to speak. So people came from all over. I'm assuming this is India, the educated guests. They came from all over to teach her how to speak. I wonder if they had any luck. But come they did, and they stayed in the room in the palace and cultivated the field of mango trees and fed the parrot. And eventually they went away frustrated and angry at the silent little girl. They couldn't get her to speak. So they worked in the mango fields, they stayed in the room in the palace, but they couldn't, they didn't have any luck with getting little Cinnamon to speak. One day a tiger came to the palace. He was huge and fierce, a nightmare and black and orange, and he moved like a god through the world, which is how tigers move. The people were afraid. There's nothing to be frightened of, said the Raja. Very few tigers are man-eaters. But I am, said the tiger. The people were much amazed that the tiger could speak, although it did nothing whatsoever to, to stop their fear. Oops. You might be lying, said the Raja. I might be, said the tiger, but I am not. Now I'm here to teach the girl cub to talk. So the tiger came and said he could want to Teach the girl cub to talk and to see if he can. The Raja consulted with the Rani and despite the oh, 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 no. the Raja consulted with the Rani. The tiger was shown to the room in the palace and given the deeds to the mango field, and he would also have been given the parrot, but it's it's too squawked and what it had not squawked and had it not squawked and flown to the rafters where it stayed and refused to come down. So they took it, the tire to the room and they gave him the deed to the mango field. But the parrot took off up in the, the, the rafters. See it way up there? The parrot flew up there and would not come down. Not interested. Cinema was shown into the tiger's room. There, said the Ronnie, even the bird knows. Leave me with the girl, said the tiger. And then reluctantly, the Raja and the Ronnie and the Ronnie's aunt and the palace staff left the beast with cinnamon. She pushed her fingers into its fur and felt its hot breath on her face. The tiger put cinnamon's hand into his. Pain, said the tiger, and extended one needle-sharp claw into Cinnamon's hand. It pierced her soft brown skin, and a bead of blood, bright blood welled up. Cinnamon whimpered. Oh! So he took his claw, one claw, and poked her hand and made it bleed, and taught her the word pain. Fear, said the tiger, as he began to roar, starting so quietly you could scarcely hear it working his way up to a, a purr, then a quiet roar, then a, like a distant volcano, then to a roar so loud that the palace walls shook. 
Cinema trembled. She was so afraid. <coughs> I don't think my roar was as loud as the tiger's. Love, said the tiger, and with his rough red tongue, he licked the blood from Cinnamon's hand and licked her soft brown face. Love, whispered Cinnamon, in a voice wild and dark from disuse. And the tiger opened his mouth and grinned like a hungry god, which is how tigers grin. So he licked her hand where he had punctured it and licked her face and taught, said love. And Cinnamon repeated the word, and that made the tiger so happy. She was beginning to speak. And the moon was full that night as they sat and discussed many things. It was bright morning when the child and the tiger walked out of the room together. Cymbals crashed and bright birds sang. And Cinnamon and the tiger walked towards the Rani and the Raja, who sat at one end of the throne room, being fanned with palm fronds by elderly retainers. The Rani's aunt sat in a corner of the room, drinking tea disapprovingly. Can she talk yet? asked the Rani. Why don't you ask her? growled the tiger. Can you talk? the Raja asked Cinnamon. The girl nodded her head. She could speak. When they asked, when her parents asked her, she said she could speak. Ha, cackled the Ronnie's aunt. She can no more talk than she can lick her own backbone. Hush, said the Raja to the Ronnie's aunt. I can talk, said Cinnamon. I think I always could. Then why didn't you ask her mother? Why didn't you? Why didn't you speak? And Cinnamon said, why not? Because I had nothing to say. And now, asked her father, and now the tiger has told me of the jungle, of the chattering of the monkeys, and the smell of the dawn, and the taste of the moonlight, and the noise of a, a lake full of flamingos, and the noise a lake full of flamingos makes what it takes to the air. She said, and what I have to say to this, I'm going with the tiger. You cannot do this thing, said the Raja. I forbid it. So they, the tiger told her about the jungle and the, how the flamingos take off and the, just how wonderful it is. And she said, I'm going with them. And the father said, you can't. Let's see what Cinnamon says to the father. It is difficult, said Cinnamon, to forbid a tiger anything it wants. And the Raja and the Rani, after giving a matter a little consideration, agreed that that was so. And besides, said the Rani, she'll certainly be happier there. And what about the room in the palace and the mango grove? And the parrot, asked the Raja, who felt that there was a place for practicality in the world. Give them to the people, said the tiger. So the announcement was made to the people of the city that they were now the proud owners of a parrot and a mango grove, and that the Princess Cinnamon could speak, but be leaving for a while to further her education. So the tiger said, give those gifts, the room, the parrot, the mango grove to the people. A crowd gathered in the town square, and soon the door of the palace opened and the tiger and the child came out. The tiger walked slowly through the crowd with the little girl on his back, holding tightly to his fur. And soon they both were swallowed by the jungle, which is how a tiger leaves. The end, I hope you liked it.